picture this. You're at the doctor's office getting your blood pressure. The cuff inflates. It squeezes your arm. And then you hear 138 over 76. Your mind immediately goes, okay, is that bad? And if so, which number is the real problem? For years, medicine didn't have a clear answer. But now we know so much more about what systolic and diastolic blood pressure actually tells us. So today, we're going to unpack both numbers so you can finally know which number you really should be paying most attention to and which one is giving you an early warning sign you definitely don't want to miss. Blood pressure is the force of blood pushing against the inside walls of arteries. The top number represents the systolic pressure and this is the pressure when your heart is squeezing and pumping out blood into your arteries. Think of this like a surge of water when you first turn on a faucet. The bottom number represents the diastolic blood pressure and this is the pressure within the arteries when your heart relaxes and refills. This is that steady background pressure in pipes even when the pump isn't pushing. Now both systolic and diastolic blood pressures matter, but they don't necessarily rise for the same reasons. Going back in history a little bit, doctors used to believe that the diastolic blood pressure meant absolutely everything. The thinking was that systolic blood pressure naturally goes up with age, so unless it was extremely high, it was hardly ever treated. Diastolic blood pressure, which is the heart at rest, was seen as the reflection of the true blood pressure and the health of the heart. This was treated seemingly all the time, even if blood pressure numbers were just a little bit off. But now, over the last several years, research has flipped this thinking on its head. First, let's talk about the risks of having high systolic blood pressure. Systolic hypertension is the most common form of high blood pressure in individuals over the age of 50. Why does this happen? Well, as we begin to mature in life, arteries begin to stiffen, kind of like a rubber band that loses its elasticity. People this age are more susceptible to diabetes, as well as having problems with their heart valves. All of these things simultaneously lead to increased levels of systolic blood pressure. Now this can be incredibly dangerous if your systolic blood pressure is very high due to the increased risks of heart attacks as well as strokes, something called angina or chest pain that's related to the heart, as well as leading to permanent kidney damage. Now on the flip side, let's look at the risks of high diastolic blood pressure. Diastolic hypertension can actually be just as dangerous, especially in younger individuals or people under the age of 50. Consistently high diastolic blood pressure can weaken your body's main artery supply or the main highway that blood travels down known as the aorta. It has a main branch extending from the chest all the way down through the abdomen and eventually bifurcates or splits into two and supplies the main blood down each leg on the right and the left side. Over time, high diastolic blood pressure can weaken a part of the aorta in the abdomen and this can form a bulge. If the diastolic blood pressure isn't fixed, it can eventually cause that bulge to burst or rupture, leading to internal bleeding that can be potentially fatal. The medical term for this life-threatening condition is called an abdominal aortic aneurysm, and it's actually something that we routinely screen in individuals 65 and older who are male and who have ever smoked. To really hit this point home, think of blowing up a balloon. As you first begin to blow, it's harder, but as the air continues to expand, that balloon stretches and the walls become thinner and thinner until if you overfill a balloon, it will eventually burst. This is the same thing that happens with uncontrolled diastolic blood pressure within the aorta. So the million dollar question, which number is actually more important? Well, the answer is both, but for slightly different reasons. Both have specific concerns associated with each of them. A high systolic blood pressure increases your risk for heart attacks, strokes, and permanent kidney damage, whereas a high diastolic blood pressure increases your risk 
for abdominal aortic aneurysms, as well as long-term blood vessel damage. The thing that's changed in medicine is that we no longer just dismiss the systolic blood pressure and just chalking it up to old age. Both numbers are equally critical signals and nowadays, we actually even pay a little bit more attention to the systolic blood pressure when trying to lower someone's numbers overall. Here's the thing though that most people miss and don't realize. Even if your blood pressure is controlled on medication, the medication itself isn't the end all be all. If you're on a blood pressure medication, your risk of having these complications are still higher than someone who's never been on blood pressure medication to begin with. To really hit this point home, one large study found that a 30 year old with high blood pressure has a 63% chance of developing coronary artery disease at some point in their life versus just 46% chance for someone the same age who does not have high blood pressure. What this means is that medications, if indicated, can help and save lives, but they don't completely eradicate the risk. That's why it's so important to use medication as a temporary solution while you make the appropriate lifestyle changes in order to reduce your blood pressure naturally. You do this by focusing on eating habits, particularly looking into potassium rich foods such as avocados and fattier fish, exercise because regular movement helps keep those arteries flexible, stress minimization because stress obviously raises our blood pressure, and getting seven to nine hours of sleep at night because not enough sleep can keep our blood pressure elevated even though we may be doing everything else correctly. Even small changes can shift those numbers in the right direction and make a positive impact in the long run. Now, if you can't remember everything that we talked about today, that's totally fine. I put together a free PDF hitting all the highlights and the most important pieces that you need to remember in my blood pressure numbers guide. And you can grab that down below in the link completely for free. Now, sometimes no matter what you do, your blood pressure will remain elevated due to a specific nutrient deficiency in your body. And I actually made a video talking about that. So I definitely recommend checking it out right here.